The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Hey everybody, this is The Ash Holes. Each week, they smoke a different cigar, sometimes the same cigar, but mostly different, and they give their honest impression. They always assign an official Ash Holes rating to that cigar. So, pull up a chair, light up, relax, be an Ash Hole too. It's very rewarding. And welcome back to the Assholes, broadcasting live from the Jose Dinguez Cigar Studio. I'm Aaron. I'm joined once again with Ed and Ben. I'm already stumbling over my words. I know. But you know what? I'm wearing pants, so I'm ahead of the rest of the country right now. I realized I touched my face. You're not supposed to do that ever. Well, you're not supposed to touch anything else and then your face, I guess. Oh, right. Just don't touch Aaron's face. Yeah, that'll be okay. okay. That's an always well, rule. So <laughs> that's nothing I new. saw Ben disinfect this whole surface earlier, yeah. so we, we should be good. Yeah, we should be. I mean, unless he's trying to set us up. Could be. I don't know. Like, what was, was he in wiping that it down bulb? with disinfectant or infectant? Uh, <laughs> this I cannot say. It's a good sure. question, Aaron. It's a good question. <laughs> we'll see you in a few days. You'll yeah. never know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess if we're going to go out, we'll go out. With a good cigar. Today we've got the uh, Xeno Platinum Exclusive Series. Ooh. And this one was made exclusively for Two Guys Smoke Shop. So uh, nobody can get it, huh? Uh, we have them all. Oh, okay. Well, are we going to share? That's the question, I guess. Oh, we're happy to share with people. <laughs> and this was a run of uh, 250 boxes. Okay. They come in a Box count of 10. And this is a five and three quarter by 54. So kind of a okay. fattish, robusto ish. I like the 10 count box. I mean, that's, I'm always a fan of that. Yeah. I mean, the retail on these is $14 for a single. And by buying a box of 10, you'll save some money. And it comes in at $126.99. Yeah. Not bad. And that has a, uh, a special box cover to it, you know, and it's based on the design that was painted on the Nashua store. They, um, the two guys, Ski and Tuise, came up to... From Nash- who are you, New York? Yeah, you've seen that, right? Yep. They, oh, yeah. Yeah, and they completed the artwork at Two Guys in April of 2019. And as it turns out, if people want to go to twoguyscigars.com, that's the number twoguyscigars.com, and buy a box of them, they get this print, which matches the cover of the box. You hmm. probably saw those downstairs on your way in. And this has some uh, New Hampshire elements to it, you can see. <laughs> Even the uh, misspelled cigar. <laughs> yeah, wicked good cigars, it yeah. says on the lamp post. And, of course, you've got your obligatory live free or die. That uh-huh. is New Hampshire. Um, I know Old Man of the Mountain, yeah. He's there? Here. Oh, he's not yeah. here, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> he fell down a long time kinda, ago now. Kind of crumbled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. His face fell off. <laughs> so these are limited, and, you know, if people want to get them, they should get on that, because when they're gone, they're gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you've got a man cave, you know, be nice. Hang that up. Why not? It's got color. I mean, <laughs> I know that... Uh, Tuise always laughs because Dave calls these balloons. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the art style. Yeah. yeah. Graffiti yeah. style, whatever. Dave likes the balloons. The balloons, yeah. <laughs> so, other than that, what are your first thoughts on it, Aaron? I mean, it's definitely Davidoff. I mean, that, that you mm-hmm. know, <laughs> you know, it's got that flavor. You, you take a puff, you know it. Yeah, but, to know. me, it, it always profiles as, and not unpleasant, but a musty sort of, mm-hmm. of flavor to it. Yep, got some like umami, earthiness, and uh, kind of a, like a dry vegetal. Yep. You know, not unpleasant, but just very distinct. And I mean, the blend on it is an Ecuador Habano wrapper on the outside. It's really a, a pretty beautiful looking wrapper. With a Dominican binder, and the fillers are Dominican and Nicaraguan. Mm. Tons of smoke, smoke output. I mean, one puff, and now the whole room is filled. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's burning well. I mean, it's the construction you'd expect from anything from Davidoff. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, 
Ben, were you on your fourth or fifth cigar at this point? I think this is six. Six. Ooh. Yeah, because you guys made me smoke two last Tuesday, and I had to take the rest of the week off. Right. So <laughs> I'm here now with my sixth cigar. All right. Sick. <laughs> and how's it treating you so far? Any thoughts? It tastes like exclusivity, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, everything <laughs> exclusive about it, you know. Exclusive series, collector's edition, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like... And, and but this one we know is actually exclusive, <laughs> right? It's not just saying in. It's actually a you know a cigar that everybody knows. <laughs> I don't know who would do that. That would be ridiculous. You know? No, saying something is a limited edition when indeed it is not. Yeah, ridiculous. Like that band, limited edition. They were not <laughs> limited. <laughs> Perhaps they should have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have cut short. Uh, have you guys been holding up? You know, with the, I don't know, shutdown, I guess we could call it. It's hard to call it a quarantine because it's not really a quarantine. Yeah. It's more of a shutdown, I guess. sort of occurred to me, it feels like it's getting kind of old, but then I think, okay, well, if it opened up tomorrow, where would I go? And I don't come up with any (laughs) answers. I'm like, "Eh, eh, who am I going to see? I'd probably do exactly what I'm doing, but I know I could do something else. Yeah. Like, even if the, the state were to open up. I mean, I work at a school, and schools yeah. are closed down for the rest of the years, for the rest of the school year. So even that, it doesn't really change me too much. It just gives no. me, I guess I can go to my barber. <laughs> It'll be the, the change. Right. And yeah, my daughter's at home finishing her senior year of college. And I, I said to her at dinner the other day, hey, do you want to take a road trip with me? We'll drive down to Georgia and go bowling. <laughs> and she said no. Is Georgia open now? Is it? They're open bowling wow. and tattoo parlors. Because I said to her, well, is it the, essentially, you know. <laughs> yeah. Is it the road trip or is it the bowling? And if it's just the bowling, we could go get a tattoo. <laughs> yeah. But shot down. I wonder if people are going to get tattoos of like the coronavirus, like image, <laughs> you know, the virus image. You know, there's going to be some people. It is, you know, oddly nice looking. Yeah. You I mean, know, symmetrical. The 3D it's, models you know, it's what it is. The little crown on top. <laughs> yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. And uh, all the kids that are going to be born as a result of this, you know, at the end of the year, it's going to be ridiculous. Another the, baby boom. The Corona kids. Yeah. <laughs> not not the best name to go by, but they're stuck with it anyways. Now, Aaron, I probably don't have to ask you this, but I'm going to anyway. Have you injected any disinfectants this week? Uh, injected, uh, consumed? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I guess some of the things I've drank could be used as disinfectant, but it's sold, you know, in a typical liquor store. So. Right, right. I mean, I I can't recall what the percentage is. It's somewhere above 60% alcohol in order to kill the virus. Yeah, effectively. I've got that covered. <laughs> yeah, just get some Bacardi 151, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> you have right. no insides left, but you're fine. Yeah, yeah that would be good, though. Try that out. Maybe a flaming shot or two. <laughs> to <laughs> Good by eyebrows, up. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spice up your uh, solitude. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy the things people have been doing. I mean, just even before certain people in high office made irrational statements, mm-hmm. people were drinking, like, uh, rubbing alcohol. Mm. You know, back in March, I saw this report on someone who drank rubbing alcohol to try to prevent getting... Corona. Yeah, that that uh that doesn't work. You know no. that that is gonna kill you. Well, <laughs> There's a reason they put like ipecac in it, you know, to make you throw it up. But if you keep it down. It's it's not gonna. It's not go even well. going to the right place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you got to inhale it. Obviously, right, right. So uh, some kind of vaporizing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's a good thing that they've already been you know clamping down on uh, vape because. You don't want anybody vaping disinfectant. Because <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the real danger. We should say that we're not doctors and are being sarcastic. Yeah, but still, <laughs> do what we say. Don't do not do these things. <laughs> I mean, nobody that smokes a cigar is dumb enough to do something like that. Although, did you see, I the, don't. Did you see the study coming out of France about uh, which nicotine? <laughs> oh, the, uh, No. Yeah, apparently they noticed in the hospitals that people, they had far fewer patients who were smokers, you know, based on the general population Hmm. and what their percentages are. And they were speculating your 
80% less likely to get coronavirus as a smoker. Now, <clears throat> this was a very small study. Yep. Yeah, I mean, just like the other, I mean, that whole uh, hydrochloramine, yep. that was France, and it was, wasn't even a study. No, this so, wasn't like, really a study. This was data coming yeah, out of which, a hospital. Which is question to begin with. But, but I, I saw it today. They, they're going to launch a study hmm. with uh, 1,500 healthcare workers with some of them wearing nicotine patches hmm. <laughs> to see where that may she go. She doesn't smoke cigars, you know? <laughs> well, I feel like we're doing our part. We're doing yeah. all we can. If, if I don't get it, then, well, I mean, I'm not seeing anybody anyway, so I'm not very really good uh, <laughs> <laughs> test. <laughs> yeah, you guys are disinfecting my studio right now, so you're doing yep. your part. So thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Ed. You know, anytime. You're doing yeoman's work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so do you live by yourself then, Aaron? Uh, no, I got my brothers. Ah, so. all right. So you have people. Yep. Because they're saying, yeah, that some of the hardest hit folks are the ones that live by themselves. Yep. They've got nobody to talk to. Hardest hit in the sense that they're just bored and out yeah. of their minds. Yeah, just because uh, they've got nobody in their household. Yeah, that would... Uh... I mean, wear on some people. I think I could last a while. I did it for a while, mm -hmm. you know, did a year and a half on my own, totally. So I was all right. Yeah, usually <laughs> people who live on their own know they're going to work every day. You know, they're mm -hmm. seeing people. How's the inverse work for you, Ed, though? Because now you're home a lot more than you had been previously. Yeah, I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have your job back. All right. Um, no, at any given time, there could be three different Zoom things going on at my house. Oh, yeah. My wife and her cohorts reading Shakespeare. It's They're the new mind field. It's like you don't know when you're walking in front of a camera at any point right. in your house. And yeah. I'll be on it. My important Zoom call, you know, smoking a cigar or something <laughs> while my daughter is doing her workout routine <laughs> one floor above me. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there's some bandwidth contention. Oh, yeah, I'd imagine. I mean, everybody's going to be, like, upgrading their bandwidth soon. I think so. All right. Do we have a top five? I think we do. All right, let's jump into it. Aloha. Today's top five is brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Choose from the mild white label, the medium strength red label, or the full bodied and full flavor blue label. Series Five Five has it all. Five Five equals the perfect 10, and that's what you get every time. The only thing better than a Five Five cigar is two of them, so you can share with a friend. And now, here's today's top five list. Okay, today we're going back to the music world. And this one, it, it kind of falls into the category of it all depends on how you count. And these are the the five best-selling albums of all time. Mm. Depending on who you ask and how it got counted, the results seem to vary. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a tough one. Well, I went to the authority on all things internet, Wikipedia. So <laughs> <laughs> this is their list of the top five of all time. Coming in at number five, they have the soundtrack from The Bodyguard. Really? Yeah. That's an odd one. And that was, a I lot mean, of that was Whitney Houston. Was just, yeah, I was going to say. It's, it was one song that drove that entire album. But, and it was back before there was like, you can buy just one song, you know, before the right. internet. So. Yeah, I mean, you could buy singles, but people weren't buying Nobody singles. Nobody was buying singles. Exactly. Yeah. That was a They're weird like, hey, time. What if I like something else, you know? Yeah, well, they claim 45 million of that soundtrack. Hmm. And number four has the same number, 45 million. That would be The Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, yeah. Makes, Makes sense. Solid. Yep. I mean, that's a solid album. Yeah, and that was one that Joe was saw still breaking into the charts yep. decades after. Yeah. So I mean, people sure still buy still that sales. one. I mean, it was a, it's a very good album. <laughs> you know, just thrown through. And they've yeah. managed to bridge the gap between generations right. and generations. Yeah. A lot of those artists couldn't do it, but they yeah. some, especially as weird as they are, somehow they were able to capture <laughs> well, future that's, generations. Well, that's the reason is because they were like cutting edge, you know, it's yeah. not exactly prog rock, but you know, it's, it was unique enough to be able to survive. Right. And then that was the one where you watch the wizard of Oz or something. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. It, it works. Once the lion jumps it. out, uh, I think it's the second roar, I believe. Second roar is that <laughs> I haven't done it in a while, but... You go a full rotation through Dark Side, and then it should match up with the second roar, I guess, as you said. Yeah, you started on the, on the second roar, and everything lines up. Yep. <laughs> it's weird. We did it in school. 
Oh, yeah? Clearly my teacher was on drugs. I did it while I was in school, but... (laughs) No, our teacher made us do it. (laughs) What school did you go to? Framing a motion. Hard rocks. Ah, (laughs) What do you think? Number three. Well, I'm thinking you're probably going to have two Beatles albums in there in your top three. I don't know. I don't have any. Uh, None, really. Elvis, maybe? be in there how about our friend meatloaf with bat out of hell wow uh, 50 million copies of that he's wow. kind of like faded into obscurity you know and what did he sell Fifty thousand of bat out of hell too <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah didn't go so well got that in a box of cereal once i think and this one meatloaf <laughs> <laughs> you got meatloaf and cereal yeah, no. I didn't expect to see this at number two with 50 million also was uh, ACDC. Back in Black? Yep. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. I, I buy that. That makes yeah. perfect and sense. And they, they still album. hold their own, I think. You know? Yeah. And they've been touring forever. I think they just stopped touring in the last year or yeah. so. So I mean, the, and merchandising. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the shirts, you know, it's like Misfits. It's like, yeah, not, not as many people listen to Misfits as they wore, as many as they wore shirts. That's fair. So it's the same kind of deal. How about number one? Number one is... Oh, you're not going to do the whole... Wait for the whole drum roll to go? No. (laughs) No. How how long does that run for? 30 seconds. So I've got plenty of time. I don't have to rush it. you got 15 seconds. Well, number one is Thriller. Mm. Oh, yeah. Michael Jackson. Of course, yeah. I mean, Michael Jackson (laughs) makes sense. Well ahead of the others, 66 million. Hmm. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't I have thought of that? Uh, well, I mean, you know, stuff that's come out afterwards. I mean, stuff that's more more confirmed afterwards. People kind of push them out of your mind, you know. I that's think true. There's still some diehards, but I'm like, uh, I'm I'm fairly convinced. <laughs> you know? I think just below the bodyguard, and I've seen it on other lists, is the Eagles' greatest hits. Yep. The no. greatest hits, which is interesting. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Maybe they couldn't put together a whole... Yeah, they just had enough cohesive album hits, you know. Hello, Hotel California is pretty solid throughout. Yep. Yeah, yeah, not bad. All right. I well, mean, I can't argue with it. It's just sales. It's you know, if everybody else is an idiot, then whatever. <laughs> 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 it's a little good album, I guess. You know. I, I guess I don't know much about it. Mm. Yeah. Well, mm. I mean, the music, the whole music video slash short film. <laughs> right. Right, I know that obviously from MTV days. Yep. All right. Well, why don't we take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue smoking the Zeno exclusive series that's made specifically for Two Guys Smoke Shop. Only great leaf makes great cigars. Aganor Salive stands out because of the distinctive mouth-watering flavors of the Corojo 99 and the Criollo 98 seeds cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands in Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of the JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of the Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you will experience the unique taste and aroma that makes Aganor Salive different than any other tobacco in the world. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganor Salive. Hello, cigar aficionados. This is Klaus Kellner from Davidoff Cigars. I invite you to taste the elements with Davidoff Escurio, Nicaragua, and Yamasa. From water comes originality. Savor the sweet and spicy originality of the Davidoff Escurio tobaccos born by the rains of Bahia, Brazil. From fire comes intensity. Enjoy the bittersweet aromas and fiery intensity of the Davidoff Nicaragua. From earth comes complexity. Taste the earthy flavors and complex spices that are unique to the red soil of the Yamasa region in Dominican Republic. Only Davidoff Master Blenders could take the power of nature and blend it into a range of exceptional cigars. Each element making each cigar a unique experience. Water, fire, earth. Flavors that have risen from the very world itself. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Davidoff Cigars. Cigar adventures to a wider world. Looking for a mild cigar? Don Rafael is just that. Solidly constructed, and it offers up a mellow experience that holds a ton of universal appeal. This is just one of the reasons for Don Rafael's enormous success. 
Looking to get your friend into smoking cigars? The Don Rafael cigar is absolutely the right choice. The brand originally set out to outdo the competition, but for the price, there is no competition. You can't beat Don Rafael, it outsells them all. Don Rafael can be enjoyed any time of the day, all day, and cigar after cigar. The Don Rafael has a smooth, mellow aroma that will not linger. Draped in a seamless golden brown Connecticut wrapper, Dominican long fillers, and a Dominican binder complete the blend. Expect earthy notes with some hints of cedar throughout. And as far as quality everyday blends go, for a mild cigar smoker, it doesn't get more satisfying than this. Remember this, Don. Don Rafael. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General Word, tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease, even in non-smokers. Bohemian is the original Brazilian big ring gauge cigar with the unfinished foot, curly tailed head and value, value, value. There are Brazilian reasons to buy and smoke Bohemian and here are just a few. Created in the Cuban tradition, this lush, dark Brazilian Maduro leaf surrounds a five-year-old Sumatra binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan well-aged long filler leaves. So what you do expect from a Bohemian? A departure from the conventional. A flavorful journey into sweet, nutty, almost caramel finish. Bohemian, the original, unconventional cigar. Take a journey. When was the last time you experienced something for the first time? Curiosity drives discovery. Discover exceptional tobaccos aged to perfection with Balmoral Inejo XO. Born from passionate curiosity, Balmoral invites you to discover the optimal balance of sophisticated complexity and smoothness. Each meticulously crafted, extensively aged Inejo XO cigar blend is the result of a relentlessly global search for the top 5% of select premium tobaccos available, including our exclusive signature Brazilian Mata Norte. Crowned with a sun-grown Brazilian Arapiaca wrapper, Balmoral Inejo XO embraces your palate with complex notes of cedar, cacao, and peppery spices that finish with a smooth, underlying natural sweetness. We invite you to discover and experience Balmoral Inejo XO today. And we're back live in the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio. We're smoking the Zeno Platinum Exclusive, made for To Get a Smoke Shop. It is a New Hampshire, uh, <laughs> very centralized, uh, exclusive release. Yeah. The only place you can get it, twoguyscigars.com. It'll actually come from the store that has the uh, graffiti art on the walls. Out, out of Nashua. And yeah. yeah, I don't know how many boxes we've got left. These, <clears throat> I think, a lot. Due to uh, the pandemic, mm -hmm. have not sold as quickly as w they normally would have. That's yeah, so, everything right now, yeah. Yeah, but we've got some boxes left, so if people are interested. And, you know, I think this is a very classic Davidoff flavor. Hmm. And at the price point of $14, it, it gives you most of what you're getting from a Davidoff yeah. for a cheaper price. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 quality for it, and I got a, you know, I let it cool down a bit and took a puff, and I got some sweetness in there. So yeah. there there is some you know, flavors going on in there. It's not just your standard run of the mill Davidoff. No, and it's got you, some complexity to it. I think adding the Nicaraguan probably mm -hmm. helps a lot in that regard, and it does have a Habano wrapper, so it's got it's got some complexity to it. It's. Uh, I don't know. It's not much more than the upper end of mild for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you'll ever find anything from Davidoff that's, you know, going to gut punch you. <laughs> no. So, I mean, it's accessible by anybody, even mild cigar smokers. Uh, yeah. Flavor is good enough for a more full-bodied smoker. Yeah, you wouldn't be disappointed with the amount of flavor. No. It's not bland by any means. 
And construction is, as always, very good. Yeah. The burn on it is good. It's not as crisp as you might see on a, a Davidoff Connecticut wrapper. It's probably more be the nature of the Habano wrapper. Exactly. But, yeah, but they're a wrapper to begin with. So. so it's not razor sharp across the whole cigar, but any unevenness evens itself out. No need to touch it up at all. Mm -hmm. Yep. Solid ash. A little bit of flake, but not bad. Like it's It's holding itself together. So it's not going to make a mess on you. It's always appreciated, I guess. It doesn't really affect my, you know, numbers. Right. No. It's like, that's a cigar. It's <laughs> it's going to burn. It's going to make an ash. Have we <laughs> heard from uh, Matt Tobacco? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's been active on social media. Right. So. I think he's in his gaming cave right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rocking I mean, some borderlands. I'm sure he's not alone there. <laughs> um, well, well, alone. I hope he's alone, alone there. Alone in his, but <laughs> not alone in, in that. Nature of it. He's with his virtual friends. <laughs> his real life friends. Uh, but, but yeah, go over to uh, Instagram and follow us at Ashles Radio. Um, you know, and follow uh, Smoking Tobacco too. Sure, uh, why not? Matt's social media. He's still very active on that. So, you know, we don't we haven't forgot about him. He's he's definitely coming back when this is kind of cleared up. Well, at least the yeah. restrictions are lifted. So he's got a lot of colorful lights on that gaming system. Yeah. That seems to be the new thing. Everything needs LED lights, keyboards, mice, computers. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody's bored right now, so you just kind of, I mean, it might have been like that before, but you know, now is the time to do your home improvements and little side projects and whatnot. Well, I would expect that gaming must be way up. Mm. I don't know. I'm not one of those gaming people. There are a lot of people gaming right now. There were some games that were released recently that a lot of people are into. You know, more shooting games. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Call of Duty came out with a Warzone feature. Okay. Similar to like Those are Fortnite. popular, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people are spending their oh, time Oh, okay. That. That's like the free Call of Duty. Yes. I, I've heard of that, yeah. A lot of my friends are like, dude, are you going to play? And I'm like, nope, terrible. <laughs> it's like, oh, do I want to die? It's like, I haven't been good at a shooting game since uh, GoldenEye. <laughs> yeah, I was like, last time I played these games with you guys, I would die 15 <laughs> times and kill one person. You'd be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, I don't want to play anymore. If you can't say no odd job, I don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> so that was some sort of supplemental update or something? Or? Uh, it's just, I think it's a whole new game, whole new. right? It's a whole new game, and then there was the free version of it, which is basically like advertising to get you to yeah, buy because right. probably The gaming buy industry upgrades and whatnot. is completely changing right now. It is. I mean, it has been for a while yeah. like this whole massive multiplayer mm -hmm. kind of world it's shooting uh what is it battle royale they call it yeah i mean that never existed it couldn't exist you know right. 15 years ago it was not even a thought well it might have been a thought for somebody but no when we were kids it was hey if you've got three other friends you can all four of you can play and that well, was a big and even deal. that was a breakthrough yeah. having yeah <laughs> four controllers uh, in a single just system. a breakthrough yeah. finding three friends <laughs> no, and it, it took a while for the over the internet stuff to get good enough from yep. a, a latency standpoint exactly and just the power of the machines but now some of these gaming machines are absolute beasts you know yeah oh, I mean now it's like the whole the restrictions are on the servers themselves you know it's not people's individual systems that are slowing things down it's the server you know if they didn't put enough money into right. it mm. which leads into this whole industry of you know micro transactions oh and whatnot. it's the worst it is screwing up a lot of games ed you strike me as an oregon trail kind of guy I don't even you think know he's going to die of dysentery? <laughs> yeah i do <laughs> <laughs> no I, I don't even know what that is that was, it was way back it was like a Man, like it's a computer game that started. I think I had it on, early a, on a 286, like mm. it was like way back. Yeah, it was popular in the early to mid 90s. Yeah. When I was in grade school, yes, we were playing it exactly. Yeah, if you were good I, at recess, you got to play that game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the last one I played. It was on PCs and it was Nazis. Oh, uh, Castle Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Yeah, that's the about the last one I played. Yeah, I remember Wolfenstein. That was a good game. That was. Uh, around the same time as Doom came out, I believe. I believe you're correct. Uh, might have come out after Doom, because I think Doom kind of paved the way. Not not 100 percent certain on that one. Mm. We'll go with it. You're right. Yeah, we'll go we'll with it. Just say it like we know what we're talking. Yeah, you know, about. I was just pretend. I mean, 
some of our listeners will, will understand, and others are totally like, all right, right move on. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is they, boring. The people who are into gaming want us to move on. Yeah. People who aren't into <laughs> gaming, pretty much the Anybody audience. in our generation <laughs> would have like some cursor knowledge of this, and they're like, oh, yeah, a little, little mm. flashback. The rest are like, all right, let's hear some old Fur Freddy then. <laughs> all right, well, it's time once again to get delighted with Old Fart Freddy, brought to you by Cuban Delight Cigars. This is Old Fart Freddy, and if you know me, you know I was delighted with the good old days when life was simpler and cheaper. Bowling ain't what it used to be. Nowadays, people have too many feelings. He hurt my feelings. Well, tough it up, cupcake. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt you. In my day, we really got hurt, and we loved the little name calling. Oh, look at Freddy. I hit him with a bat, and he doesn't walk so good anymore. <laughs> feeling, nothing more than feeling. I lost my feelings a long time ago. I'm cheap, so I love Cuban Delight Cigars, a perfectly good everyday cigar, handmade in the Dominican Republic, from the pieces left over from the high-end cigars. For a quick buck, I can enjoy a Cuban Delight. Cuban Delight Cigars. You Always a fan of that one, you know. Yeah. Although I prefer Toughen Up Buttercup, personally. Mm -hmm. A little bit more to it with a little rhyme in there. By calling people cupcake, I'm all f all for that too. Well, so right. and we'll yeah. work on this with Freddie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ben previewed this one today and announced that he really needs to meet Freddie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm just. I just. I have an image in my head, like everyone else out there does, whenever they hear "Old Fart Freddy." I have that image, and I just want to see if it's validated or not. Well, can you describe that image? <sighs> Old, decrepit. Oh, I wouldn't call him decrepit. I mean, oldish. Yeah, but he, he looks 10 years younger than he is. Exactly, So when yeah. you see him, you oh, think so that. Yeah, one of those like 80-year-olds that looks like he's 60? No, I think no, he's he would, more... He would look like he's 70, but if he's... I don't know how old he is, actually. <laughs> but uh, he does, I don't know if he passed for 60, even. No, he's in his 60s, yeah. but looks like late 50s. Yeah, you know? I think that's a fair assessment. He's only in his 60s? Mm-hmm. He's, I know only. <laughs> let me tell you, he's old for his age. <laughs> he, Aren't we all? He's uh, the personification of a curmudgeon. Now that's coming from you. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, strive for. I want to become a curmudgeon. Yeah, yeah. you're just a baby curmudgeon now. No. I'm just preparing. You know, yeah. someday. You get off my lawn, kids. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I might just start yelling that out the door. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's no one you're watching. There's a lot more people walking. Too right many. Now. And have you noticed they all seem to think they can walk in the street right in yeah. the middle during the pandemic? I mean, it's my my tap, my score is going up, you know. Pedestrians. <laughs> <laughs> Your Frogger score? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, lots of people on the roads. Not as many joggers, I feel like, as used, it used to be, but like tons of what people walking, uh, wandering neighbors, around. neighbors talking to each other from like across <laughs> a yeah. driveway, you know, a big distance. Who do you dislike more, Aaron? Because this is specifically for you. <laughs> okay. Joggers or cyclists? Uh, well, I... Well, I... <laughs> Answer honestly. I was going to say I am a cyclist. I was a cyclist. I, I'm way out of practice. My I broke my bike years ago and just haven't gotten around to fixing it. So I, I don't really dislike joggers, but I, I can't say cyclist because... I was one of them, you know? And he's sitting right next to you. Yeah, he's a... Oh, you're a cyclist. I dislike right? most of them. Yeah, I mean, you people... like everyone. That's why I didn't ask you the question. People in general, <laughs> yeah. And no, I I think a, a lot of cyclists don't know how to ride on the road. Mm-hmm. True. They're, yep. They're not good at it. You see him, like, with earbuds in, and it's like, no, no, you, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, <laughs> you need to know what's coming up behind you. <laughs> right, and although I think the law in Massachusetts is you can ride two riders abreast, you are still mm -hmm. supposed to get the fuck out of the way <laughs> when cars come. Yep. And, you know, at some point, too, the, the, the drivers don't seem to understand that a, a bicycle is a vehicle. Yep. They have the same mm -hmm. right to the use of the road as an automobile. Yep. So it really is a little bit on both sides. Yeah, and I tend to get met more angry at drivers in general. Like, especially, like, if somebody's letting you into traffic or letting somebody else in, it's like, no, don't do that. Just do what you're expected to do on the road. Don't be nice. Nice causes problems, you know? I'm with yeah, you. You stop one, unexpectedly, then everything's out the window. Yeah, the one I hate is, you know, if you're pulling out and then somebody who has no one behind them stops 
oh, to yep. let you go. And yep. it's like the no. whole thing would have gone so much more smoothly if you kept going because I'm checking the other way. And it's yeah, just- I, I totaled the car because somebody let me in. It was a two-lane road. And, and, <laughs> you know, and I took it slow. Somebody let me in, but the person right behind them decided to jump around yep. and smash into me. Yes, it was technically I was at fault, but <laughs> never would have happened they, if they nobody let me in. You. <laughs> if they had treated me with disdain, then I would have been fine. Appropriate disdain. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then that's like the cyclist, you know. If I'm coming around a curve or there's a hill, I'm going to wait until it's safe to pass them. And a yep. lot of them seem to get irritated, like they're a traffic cop like telling you're, me like to you're go rushing them. around like, them. It's like, I and can't it's like, see around you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not taking your you word for it. You see that bend it, in the road? <laughs> I can't see around it. <laughs> so, yep, I'm with you on that one. All right, so we hate everybody, but <laughs> we don't hate this cigar. At least no. I don't. No, I definitely don't hate it. I mean, I, I think it's, it's still burning well. I'm not really getting... A, any change as I go through here, it's just very consistent. The yep. flavor's been consistent for me. Yeah, it hasn't been getting harsh or anything. It's it's you know a steady flavor, which is fine. Yeah, you know it's to be expected with a, a Davidoff. And now I can go back to a little curmudgeonly on the rating. Mm. And I mean, I have to preface it by saying that uh, Davidoff makes great cigars. Mm-hmm. They really have never been particularly in my wheelhouse. And especially for the price you have to pay Mm -hmm. for Davidoff, I usually will choose to pay for something else. But this is a solid cigar. I mean, I would have to, and this is kind of just because it's not in my wheelhouse, it's a begrudging 90. Okay. I think it it is a very good cigar for the right person, and Mm -hmm. I am not that person. (laughs) Uh, I'm... Close to you. I'm a little a little higher. I'm um, actually 92. Um, same kind of boat. Not a huge Davidoff fan, but there mm-hmm. are you know certain Davidoff cigars that I would gravitate towards. Um, but I mean, just the the flavor is pleasant. You know, it's the construction's good. It's solid all around. Good smoke output. When I first took the cold draw, I thought the draw was going to be a little loose, but it's actually just mm-hmm. right. So um, you know, I, I have no points against it. Um, so I think I, I feel comfortable at a 92. Ben, how do you feel? I know you, you had some trouble with the retro hail. Uh, yeah, it was a little, um, a little harsher than I expected on the retro hail. It gave me a little bit of that eye watering. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh wait, like, I can't see my jingle palette. Hold on guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it Is seemed, that what you're calling it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seemed more daunting than it actually proved to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be a little bit heavier, a little bit harsher, but as I've gone through about halfway of the cigar, I, I've really started to enjoy it. Yeah. So I mean, if I had to grade it, probably 90, 91. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, 91 would be the safe bet because that's yeah. what we're going with. I think we're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Davidoff are, are known to be approachable. So, I mean, at least flavor wise and strength wise. Price wise, I mean, they're not outlandish. No. They're just a little bit north of, of your typical cigar. And. You know, I think that's why so many people buy them as gifts, right? You really can't go wrong mm-hmm. with a uh, a whole box of them at one twenty six ninety nine. Be a great gift for somebody. Yeah, yeah. It's got some nice artwork with it too. You know, it's a nice collector item. Yeah. And you know, some people are diehard Damodoff fans, so they definitely would be thrilled to have this. So, all right, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. Well, you've been listening to The Assholes, broadcasting from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio. Head over to unitedpodcastnetwork.tv. You can see all our past episodes and share them, uh, repost them, do whatever you want with them. We don't really care. Now, <laughs> we will uh, see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.